What is up YouTube? Welcome back to Work Knife Balance. We've got an unboxing to do today. This is a knife from the Pass Around Group. I'm pretty excited. I think there might be two knives in here. Not 100% sure, but um, we'll go ahead and check that out in a second. But before we get too far, I want to go ahead and say thank you to anybody who's already liked and subscribed to our channel. If you haven't, feel free to hit that subscribe button down below. You can also head over to Instagram and like us at Work Knife Balance 939. It's a great way to connect with us to let us know what you want to see, what you don't want to see, what you like, what you don't like, all that good stuff. And then we'll send you back a sticker. Um, and some other little swag stuff to say thank you for letting us check out your your knife, your tools, all that good stuff that you send in for us to review um, and just supporting the channel. So, yeah, we thank everybody for the amazing support we've had in this first year so far. We're coming near the end of the first year. And, uh, yeah, it's just, it's been awesome. So, wanted to shout out and say thank you to everybody. But without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into this. I'm going to be using um, the Kunwu. Uh, Tau Compact. This is the, not the mini Tau, but the Tau Compact um, today for the unboxing knife. I've been carrying this one a little bit more recently. I I just love the size, the ergos, everything about it. So um, you didn't come here for the Tau Compact though. So we'll go ahead and dive into this bad boy and see what we've got over here. This is a knife from the pass around group that I'm a part of. And so this is the Lefty EDC Pass Around Group. This one came from Dennis uh, Fun EDC, Dennis for Fun EDC. Um, I'll go ahead and, if I remember, uh, put the link to Dennis's stuff down below so you can see it. But looks like, yes, I believe two Kershaws in this Pass Around right here. So excited for this one of these I'm really excited for the other one I'm like okay cool let's check it out <laughs> so one cool thing about these both these Kershaw's is both of these Kershaw's are USA made Kershaw's so you can see that proudly displayed right there at the top made in the USA by both these This is gonna be the launch 9 and the Bel Air so I'm not sure I don't know why I just closed it of course I'm gonna open it right up and look at it um, but this I believe is the launch nine. Yep, this is the launch nine. As you can see, with that, uh, this is a out the side automatic there for you. Just launches right out there. So that's going to be the first one, and then the other one is the one I'm really excited about. I'm I'm not the biggest fan, and uh, just right out the front, um, y'all can or I guess right out the side, y'all can. Uh, probably know this just from looking at my collection, but I'm not the biggest fan of out the side automatics. I do like out the front. Um, I do like OTFs for sure, but I've never been the biggest fan. That's not to say that they're not great or anything like that. I've just never found them to be amazing or super useful in my opinion. I like the OTFs uh, for sure, but if I have something that's going to be a flipper, I want to have a, a manual flipper. Um, it's just more fun, more fidgety in my opinion. And out the side OTFs, like if someone was able to make, uh, and I like double action OTF, so uh, just kind of OTF. Um, if someone was able to make an out the side OTF that then I could push the button and it would go right back in, that would be amazing. Um, I would really like that. But um, without having that, I, I just, it's so much, okay, now I've got to use two hands to close it. It's It can possibly be done one-handed but it is very and that's on this Kershaw which is much easier to do um, than some OTFs or not, not OTFs out the side OTS um, autos are much much harder to close one-handed so yeah all right first impressions I, I actually really like the knife I I really like the, the fit and feel of this knife quite a bit I I don't think I would ever get it because it is an out the side OTF and I say that now and six months from now who knows maybe I'll pick one up because I think it's cool and it feels great but it is a lot thinner than I thought it would be um, just off first impressions there it is actually quite thin I think this is a G10 on the base right here so just kind of like a G10 scale and then I'm assuming this is just aluminum it's very light 
That is incredibly light. And it's got a good spring. It's nothing, I mean, it's it's not it's not by any means jumping out of my hand and it's not hard to hold on to. You can pretty easily get a good grip on that. I really like this choke up choil. You can easily get all the way up there and then you've got a ton of purchase space on the back if you've got big hands. Um, but you've got a good amount of room. I wear, we talk about this in every video, I wear a large glove so I have average hands and I can get a good purchase in the normal grip, but then choking up, there is a ton of room back there. So there's no, no sparing in space there. So you have a lot of space for large hands as well. Good pinch grip, good getting in here. Nice, really nice ergos on this. This is actually a very well done knife, Kershaw. I haven't had, I haven't purchased a Kershaw in a couple years, to be honest. Um, I've just kind of expanded where I've been looking at knives. So I'm excited to kind of look at some of these knives through the pass around group and just see where Kershaw's coming, what they've got going forward. I like the two-tone on the blade. So if you can kind of see that, you've got the two-tone on the blade right there. And this is uh, CPM 154, it says right there. So that's, that's something that's pretty cool. Um, CPM 154 on this right here, Kershaw Auto says right there as well, Auto Kershaw. Um, some really good detail. You've got some good chamfering around the edges here. The button itself is actually really comfortable. It doesn't like protrude too far up so it doesn't stick out too much. You've got a probably just a steel um, deep carry pocket clip here. You've got a little bit of the mushrooms sticking up on the clip on the there so those screws aren't necessarily recessed. Um, that annoys some people. It, it annoys me but uh, I would imagine it's probably not too bad because there's a ton of space in that clip there. Nice lanyard hole on the back side there. This is, I like the way that this is done. It, it almost, it's done really well to where it hides that kind of line. So it looks like a solid, this, it looks like this is a solid chunk even though it's not, it's two pieces put together. And I really like the design choice on that spacer. It's kind of like a wide pillar spacer. I really like that. It's almost like a a spool, a barrel spool. I don't know if that's that's 100% me making up a term, but I I really like the design choice on that. The little wider pillar versus something small and little like you normally would see. So that's pretty cool. Really nice kind of like view of the blade in there, centered absolutely. It's kind of hard to get in there. Let's see. Centered absolutely perfect. It looks on the camera like it's hugging this side, but I can promise you looking at it, that's just because you can't see the space because of the camera, but it is it is centered pretty well. Um, dead centered on that too. Uh, really nice jimping on this top right up here. Not, not an excess amount of jimping, but it goes right into, goes right up to that swedge. So the jimping comes right to where the swedge starts and the swedge comes down. So that's, that's not bad in itself. It's a good amount of jimping to have for this knife. Yeah. We'll go ahead and set this one to the side real quick and we'll go ahead and get out the other one. Um, and so this second one is the one that I was really excited for. This is the Bel Air. And this is a, an access lock, I believe uh, Kershaw calls it a Dura lock. Uh, I don't know if these are spare or if these are the originals. Because this is Lefty's pass around, um, Lefty did say that he put in stronger springs and I believe he put in some skiff bearings um, with the ceramic ball versus the steel ball. Um, so that would be definitely, ooh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, I really like that action. That lock bar is really nice, um, the Dura lock. So I really like that blade profile too. This, I wish I had it out here. This really kind of reminds me of my Warncliffe Deca. So I really like the fit and feel of this knife. The aluminum scales feel really good. Has a really nice crossbar action, the Dura lock action there. I believe this is 150. Oh no! Wow, okay, so this is uh, something that's pretty cool. Magna Cut, for sure. Let's see if we can get it to, to look at that there. So this is going to be a Magna Cut blade on this. Well done, Kershaw. 
getting in there with some of the fun stuff. I don't know who the designer is on this. Um, probably pick it up on the actual unboxing, but yeah, Magna Cut Blade. Really nice kind of Warren Cliff drawn out there. I guess it would be kind of like a, actually more of kind of a reverse Tonto. Because um, you don't have the flat edge for the Warren Cliff. It's got a big belly. It's not quite drawn over the top for a sheep's foot. So that'd be uh, more of a reverse Tonto, um, I'd say, in there. But yeah, these aluminum scales give a lot of... They're smooth, but they're not slick. So I like that about it as well. This is this is pretty sweet. Kershaw's definitely stepping up from where they used to be. Um and you can get that reverse flick in there. So with these, I'd be interested to see what it comes with stock springs, what those look like, but you can thumb stud flick, you can reverse flick in there. This is a really well done knife, Kershaw. I don't like that. Your pocket clip sticks up above the knife. I mean, I guess you'll have a, a true deep carry, so you're gonna carry your knife completely hidden, but I don't, I really don't like the way that sticks up so far compared to the knife. I wish that was sunken down right with the blade. That that just looks a little goofy to me. That looks a. That, I mean, that's a choice. That was a choice. Kershaw made that decision. Oh, what was that? Oh, ha. Okay. So I had my finger on the dura lock. So when it went up, it came right back down like that. Got to be careful when you do that reverse flick. Make sure you're off that lock. I had my finger pressed on that lock, so it came right back down. Um, although that's kind of cool. Oh, you want me to close it? Oh yeah, there we go. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so this is the Bel Air. Kind of first impressions, I really like the Bel Air. I like the Bel Air more than the launch. I just think the Bel Air is gonna be better for my carry. Um, and I don't necessarily love out the side autos. Um, so there's, there's that right there, just personal preference. But this is a really nice, really nice Ergos, fits well. I wish that jimping would have continued a little further. I understand on the launch why they stopped it hitting the swedge. With nothing like that, I wish that jimping would have continued further up here. Too many knife manufacturers, I explain to me what that jimping, I mean, I, I know what it's doing, but this isn't the most comfortable for an average hand. This would be more comfortable, put it out there. Or put some out here for when you're doing any sort of like tip work or anything like that. So that's, those are, those are just like small oversights, I think. Really nice detail, though. I really like the kind of milling work, I guess, that they did on the the top end right here, which is pretty cool. And then there's chamfered. It's chamfered all the way around. So both sides have a nice chamfering to it. Um, really good kind of anchor spot here. You can hold and choke up. I don't think it's necessarily designed for it, but because you got that flat edge, if you needed to, you could get in here. You just want to be careful because you've got that blade right there um, with the sharpening edge so or sharpening choil on that one so yeah this is this is a pretty sweet knife pretty sweet little Bel Air so I'm gonna probably carry this one for a day and just see how it feels um, and then we will do a full video I'm probably not gonna do a full video on the launch I'm just not the biggest fan of out the side knives. I can't carry out the side knives legally here, so I just I probably won't do a full video on it. Um, but we will do something for the Bel Air. Um, I guess here we'll do this since I'm not going to do a full video for the out the side knife. We'll do some quick comparisons and measurements with this one. Tip to tail, we're looking just about a little over seven and a half. We'll say. 7.6 blade length, we're looking at about three and a quarter with a cutting edge of about 2.75. So that huge choke up choil right there, sharpening choil, choke up choil. We'll do some side by side comparisons. Go ahead and pull out the Veritas up top there for you, Kaiser Veritas. And then we'll do the Miguron Mayoral down below, or sorry, Miguron Pagos down below. Um, give you some good side-by-side -side comparisons there, as well as some more common knives. Uh, let's see. We've got our, oops, we've got our Para 3 and our Para 2 that we'll pull out. 
pair of two bound below, pair of three up above. So it's really close to that pair of three size. Handle's a little bit larger on the launch. Blade is a little bit larger on the launch as well, but kind of a good side-by-side -side comparison. And then we'll do two more. We'll pull out the NAFS Lander, um, which has been one of my really go-to carries. And then we'll, we opened with it. We'll do the Kunu Compact Towel right there. So really good side-by-side -side comparisons with a couple of those. I think that Lander actually gives a really good handle comparison and side-by-side -side comparison there. So um, different blade profiles, obviously, but that's a good comparison. So gives you a couple things to compare to and uh, overall first impressions I I'd say it's a it's a good knife I'd say it was a good knife I don't have anything negative to say about it CPM 154 is really good had good action feels like it has good lockup there's good there's really not a lot of blade play at all um, with this so you don't have to worry about any of that that is pretty secure in there um, it has a stiff enough spring that it's gonna operate well comes out fast good ergos on it not too thick not too thin and the weight is really nice i do like that this pocket clip is a little bit more in line with the scales and the body versus the other one where it was sitting up high like that but yeah i would say that overall this is a great knife if you like out the side knives i don't know what the price is on this i'm gonna assume cpm 154 out the side Kershaw, I'm not too dialed with some of Kershaw's pricing. I'd say this is probably 150, maybe sub 150. I don't know. I'd say probably, I would say 150 is a safe bet. It may be a little more, it may be a little less, but I will definitely price this or get a, uh, definitely get a link to this below. So if it's something you want to pick up for yourself you can go ahead and follow that link if it's amazon link it does support our channel we thank you very much for all the support if it's not an amazon link just follow it and know that you're getting some sweet deals on knives so yeah that's pretty much it for this time we've got the kershaw launch and we've got the kershaw bel air check back in a little bit we will have a full video on the bel air not much left to say until next time ttfn